The premise of the movie is set in the year 1962. An Italian-American doorman, Tony, works at the Copacabana nightclub in the Bronx. He frequently comes across rude customers on his job, but is not afraid to throw hands when they break the club's code. One day, a wealthy businessman visits their club and emphasizes that his hat must be kept safe since it was a gift from his mother. Tony steals the hat, which makes the businessman go ballistic on the staff. Later, he gives it back, pretending to have recovered it from a thief. Because of the gesture, he not only gets money from the businessman, but also befriends him. Tony and his friends are distressed because for the next two months, the club is being closed for renovation. They have to look for a part-time job to keep their families fed. The following day, two African-American men come to repair the kitchen sink at Tony's house. Since it is the 1960s, the African-American population in the U.S. is a frequent target of racism. Dolores, though, doesn't care about their race, and is very welcoming. She even offers them water, and sees them off politely. However, after they leave, Tony throws away the glasses they drank from. He doesn't think much of it because such subtle but apparent racist behavior is common in society at this time. One day, while Tony is still looking for a job, he gets a call from an associate of his. The person tells him about someone named Dr. Don Shirley, who is looking for a driver. The very next day, Tony goes to Don's place for an interview and finds out that he is an African-American man. He has a doctorate in psychology and music and is a world-famous pianist. Tony has never seen such a luxurious lifestyle in his entire life, and to think that it all belongs to Don is surprising to him. The pianist is planning to go on an eight-week concert tour through the Midwest and Deep South, and needs Don to be his driver for the trip. If everything goes well, they will be able to return home on Christmas Eve. Don explains the job to Tony, who is unwilling to be his butler alongside his driver. Don increases the pay because he knows that he's going to face extreme racism on the trip, and Tony seems like someone who can protect him, but Tony refuses and walks away. Later that day, the pianist calls Tony's home and asks Dolores for permission to take her husband away for two months. Tony agrees to accompany him for $125 a week. And remember, in the 60s, you could have bought some pretty sweet NFTs with that money. On the day of their departure, Dolores wishes him farewell and urges him to write letters throughout the trip. The record company rents them a nice car and informs Tony that if he misses a show, he will money. More importantly, they provide him with something called the Green Book. It is a tourist guide for black people in America that consists of a list of safe places for them to stay in the segregated southern states. Tony is surprised that something like this book even exists. The journey starts, and initially, Tony bores Don with his non-stop chatter. Don is also especially annoyed because of Tony's improper grammar usage and absurd vocabulary. His habit of eating messily with his hands and taking a leak in the middle of the road all seem outrageous to him. With his first show, Don impresses everyone, including Tony, with his brilliant performance. Tony immediately starts to respect him as a musician. Later, he is caught gambling with the helpers while waiting for the show to end. Don stops him, disappointed that he chose to come outside when he had the option to take the high road and stay at the party. As the journey continues, Tony plays contemporary music on the radio. He is shocked to find out that Don doesn't know popular musicians like Aretha Franklin, since she is especially famous among the African American community. He is even more surprised when Don reveals that he has never had Kentucky Fried Chicken. They stop at the original restaurant in Kentucky, and Tony forces Don to try some. Although he is initially skeptical about eating with his hands, he is pleasantly surprised upon trying the dish. One day, they stop at a gas station where Tony finds an expensive J ground that seems to have fallen off a cart of a rock seller. He pockets it, but is immediately called out by Don. The pianist asks him to go inside and pay for the rock this instant. Tony whines and groans, but does it anyway. Then, the duo reaches the second venue, where the grand piano for Don is not cleaned. The janitor claims that a black person like him would have no problem playing on such a piano. The comment makes Tony furious, and he punches the man in the face. The piano is then cleaned and polished for the performance. As they head further south, Don is made to stay at Black's only hotels. Even though he is among his people, he doesn't seem at home. One night, he goes to a bar where a bunch of racists beat him up just for being there. Tony quickly rushes to the location and threatens the thugs, claiming that he has a gun. 
After they narrowly escape the encounter, Don asks him if he really has a gun. Tony replies that he was just bluffing, and the two continue to the hotel. For the next concert, they stop at a southern mansion. As usual, Don is the center of attraction in the room, and is respected. He is also the only African-American man other than the butlers, but he is used to such an environment. The host even makes special fried chicken for the main guest, but during intermission, he is barred from using the white people's bathroom. The host directs him to a tiny cubicle made of wood outside the house. Refusing to be humiliated, Don returns to the hotel to go to the bathroom before going back to the concert. Tony is furious at seeing Don being polite to the people who denied him basic decency. Throughout the journey, Tony writes letters to Dolores, but they are mostly awful. Don reads them and sees several spelling mistakes and grammar blunders. He helps Tony make them more poetic and beautiful. Back in New York, Dolores gets the letter and cannot help but cry because she cannot believe Tony is literate, also because it's beautiful. In the following scene, the duo is walking down to their next destination when they spot a handsome suit displayed in the front of a store. Don walks in to buy it, but the owner refuses to let him try it on before paying. Because none of the other customers are required to do the same, it is clear that the man is judging him on the basis of his skin color. Tony tries to retaliate, but Don stops him and politely leaves. That evening, Tony gets a call from the police station calling him in urgently. He goes there to see Don and a man naked in a cell. It turns out that they were caught engaging in homosexual intimacy. Tony bribes the officers to let Don go, which he is not very happy about. He claims that the cops were wrong in the situation, which makes him wrong for Tony on the other hand calls him ungrateful. In the following scene, the duo is outside a hotel when Tony runs into two of his Italian friends from New York. Seeing that he is working for an African-American man, they ask him to have some dignity. He is even offered a job with better pay. Later that day, Don offers Tony double the money and promotes him to his travel manager. He speaks Italian, revealing that he understood everything his friends talked about earlier. Tony reveals that he was never planning to leave him in the middle of the concert and refuses to accept more money. Don is visibly touched by this comment. On the way to their final show, in Mississippi, the duo is pulled over by the local police. It turns out that in their part of town, African American people are restricted from being out past sundown. The officer pulls them out of the car and calls Tony a racial slur for being an Italian. He loses his temper and punches the officer, eventually leading them to being arrested. Don uses his rights to call someone from the station. In a short time, the police receive an angry call from the governor. They eventually have to release Don and Tony because of Don's influence. Outside, Don reveals that he called the U.S. Attorney General. Rob Tony is amazed and happy about the experience, but Don doesn't feel the same. He is furious at Tony since now they'll be late for the last show. He has been called names his entire life and is mad that Tony couldn't even handle it once. The conversation turns into an argument when Tony calls Don a delusional rich man who doesn't know anything about the struggles his own people have to face. Don storms out of the car in frustration. His entire life he has been too black for white people, too white for black people, and not man enough for being a homosexual. He expresses his frustration to Don, who understands his problems, and silently apologizes. That night, they stay at a hotel, where Tony writes yet another letter to his wife. He claims that he has gotten the hang of it by now, but Don insists on reading it. In the letter, Tony has described his wife as a house full of a happy family. The pianist smiles and approves of it. A few hours later, they arrive at the final concert venue in Alabama. Don is shown great respect when the host lets him park his car in the space that he calls the guest of honor spot. But right after, he is taken to a tiny dressing room. Don doesn't complain and continues changing inside of it. He then tries to join the others in the dining room, but is denied access. The host claims that they have nothing personal against him, but it has been a tradition for the restaurant to only allow black servants to walk inside the dining space. When Don refuses to play unless he is allowed to dine, the host tries bribing Tony to persuade his boss. Tony is about to get handsy with the man, but Don stops him. He gives Tony the right to choose what he should do, eat somewhere else and continue the show, or ditch it altogether. Tony chooses the latter, and they drive off to a bar for black people. Don flashes his wallet filled with money, which a couple of thugs notice. He even plays the piano with the local jazz band and enjoys his time to the fullest. 
When they're about to leave, Tony spots the thugs from earlier, waiting behind their car to mug them. He uses his gun to fire two shots into the air and scare them away. From behind him, a shocked Don swears that he knew Tony had a gun all along. The duo then begins their journey back to New York, hoping to make it by Christmas Eve. They drive through a snowstorm that makes the journey even more difficult. Don jokingly asks Tony to bring his lucky stone out because they need it for the ride. Tony shamelessly puts the stone that he stole on the dashboard and the two... After hours of driving non-stop, Tony can no longer stay awake. He gives up on reaching home by Christmas Eve, but Don offers to drive while he rests in the back seat. They make it to Tony's apartment just before the family dinner. Tony invites Don in, but he wishes them Merry Christmas and drives away. Dolores and the family are pleasantly surprised to have him back. As they talk about the trip, Tony's brother jokingly calls Don a slur, but a changed Tony asks him to be more respectful. Hey, don't you dare call me a gobble goo. A while later, a knock on the door reveals that Don has returned to join them. The entire family welcomes him wholeheartedly. Dolores hugs him and thanks him for helping Tony with his letters. In the last clip, a picture of real-life Tony is shown. He continued working at the Copacabana and became the maitre d' of the club. Don also continued his music career and was highly successful. They remained friends for the rest of their lives before they both passed away in 2013.